Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are already part of the Cam Fam, thank you so much for coming back and watching my videos and thanks for subscribing. For those of you that aren't, please hit that subscribe button down below to join the Cam Fam um, and join us for future video content. With that being said, we are going to jump right into our first video in our Best of Beauty 2020 series. We are going to be talking all about face and complexion products today and just kind of talk through my favorites. Some are drugstore, some are high-end, combination of both. So let's just jump right in. We are going to talk primers first. And so two of my favorite primers this year, one is from the drugstore and one is from high-end and they are dupes for each other. This is the Revlon Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Primer the one with the pink cap, and then the Tatcha Liquid Silk um, Canvas Primer. Now, they look different on the skin, but they perform very similarly. And so both of these have a very smoothing effect. They kind of blur out lines. So this is the Revlon and this is the Tatcha. So you're gonna see the Tatcha is definitely kind of pink and milkier. And then the Revlon one is just clear. So while they look different, what they do is very similar. And so I would definitely say they're reminiscent of each other. These are definitely top products for me. This is a one and done. If I don't want to do anything else, I don't wanna fuss with pore filling primers on top of these, I will use this and get a great overall look. I'm actually using the Revlon one on my face today. Now my all time favorite primer of life that I go back to, I have probably four of these in my collection right now. The Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is a primer plus moisturizer. It is amazing if you have dry skin. So just very liquidy in consistency, really hydrates your skin, just a very generic basic primer, but that moisturizes and really builds on that. So love that. Next up we have pore filling primers. And so I do tend to have larger pores up around my cheeks, my nose, and then I actually have some pretty bad um, forehead crinkles. I used to wear, need glasses or wear glasses when I was younger. I'm mean, into my early 20s and so I would squint a lot because I didn't have sunglasses. And so unfortunately I ended up with these hot dog crinkles and so I actually use a pore filling primer and I'll tap it in and smooth it through those lines so that my foundation doesn't settle. Um, so the two that I have are the Clarins Instant Smooth Perfecting Touch. I got this in a boxy charm. This is what it looks like. It is kind of a pink putty looking product. And so the best way to use these is to get a very small amount, warm it up in your fingers and press the product into your face. And so you don't want to just kind of smooth it out. You really want to press and then smooth. A, a very good dupe for this, and again, not a dupe video, I just happen to have products that I love, is the L'Oreal Ma Magic Perfecting Base. I was actually using this one before that got the Clarins one, and they are super similar color, texture, what they do. You'll see there, I'm gonna put them right next to each other. They look identical. So I'm actually gonna press this into my skin, so hopefully you can see. I'm kind of just mushing them together. I don't think that's really a big deal. So you can just see how small the little lines on my hand are compared to this side by doing that. Love these. Love the Clarins one. I love both of them equally. I got this in a boxy charm. If I hadn't, I would continue to use the L'Oreal one. I have them both, so I will use them both. So now we are going to move on to kind of, and I'm just going in the order that I put on um, my makeup foundations. This has been the year of foundations for me. I have tried so many foundations. And so I do have some that I wear specifically when I wear a mask now, but they're more mattifying and that's not my priority preference, it, but it's something that I know I need when I go out in public. And so these are going to be more for me with dry skin, things that I use on a more regular basis. So again, I am teleworking. I'm in front of the camera a lot throughout the day in meetings and different things. And so I use these then. So first favorite of the year was the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour wear foundation. I have mine in the shade 410. It does have a pump bottle. Ooh, this is what it looks like. It's a little bit runny. 
This tone is a little bit pink for me, but I can get it to work. Um, I did have, I think I've bought two or three different shades and I have yet to find one that matches perfectly. But I like this because it's definitely very natural on the skin. You can see it's kind of a little bit glowy. It does add a sheen to your skin. Nothing outstanding. Really, really pretty. The next drugstore foundation that I have that I have actually really enjoyed as well. And you can see I've used a decent chunk of this considering how many foundations I have. This is the Revlon Candid Photo Ready Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. I have mine in the shade 120. This is very messy. Um, also has a pump. You will see that this is definitely kind of a thicker foundation right out the get-go. But it still offers that kind of luminous radiance. And yes, you're going to see my foundation sheets are all over the place. I have a hard time matching myself. Really, really beautiful. So these two from the drugstore, highly recommend. Now, my all-time favorite foundation, I would say not even just in 2020, but of life so far to this day with the way my skin is, is the Bite Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I love this for the way that it sits on the skin. It does not settle into my lines. It does not make me look overly shiny throughout the day. It does not make me look dry. This is my perfect foundation. I wear it in the shade L25, which also happens to be my exact color match. And so if anything ever has a foundation finder um, for shade, I use this as my color match. So you'll see the texture is kind of reminiscent of this one. There it is. Not quite as shiny as the first two. Really, really beautiful, you guys. I love this one. And then kind of a late runner in the game, but nonetheless, it made the, the top finale is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing Makeup Broad Spectrum SPF 45. I bought this probably three or four months ago, and it has quickly joined top ranks with my Bite Foundation um, and my Candid foundation. The Infallible I haven't worn as much recently because I've kind of been sticking with the others, but I still use this from time to time. I think it's also because I have the color match isn't quite as spot on as these. But this one I have in the shade 1W2, which actually I feel like is a touch yellow for me. So this one's definitely more liquidy, so similar to the Infallible. Kind of run that this way. So you'll see it kind of has that glowiness. And you can definitely see, again, this is my perfect color match. This one's a little bit more yellow in comparison. So this is actually one that I like so much. I would definitely go, this will be a good color match for me during, like a perfect color match during the summer. I would definitely get the shade lighter than this if I can find one that's a little more neutral and a little lighter. Um to go ahead and have something for all year round. I think this is amazing. And the other good thing about this one is it is 1.2 fluid ounces. All the other three I showed you were one fluid ounce. So you actually get more product for your money out of this one. So those are my foundation favorites. We are gonna jump into color correctors. So I do have, I deal with dark circles right up along here. And so every day when I do my makeup, I do use a color corrector. So I have three of them that I enjoy. The first one is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I do just have this in a little mini. These last for forever. You'll see I have a nice big dent there on this little sample size, deluxe size. These are just pinky toned. There's not gonna be a lot to show on these. These just do an amazing job at um, softening up kind of dark spots in your in your under eye area. I have seen several people who have kind of hooded eyes. I don't have hooded eyes, but put them kind of a little bit of this corrector right along here to help with the shadowing from hooded eyes. So if you guys have hooded, hooded eyes, you know, feel free to try that and let me know how it goes. The next two I have are actually drugstores. And so one is kind of an OG favorite for me and has been for forever is the 
Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser. I have the shade Brightener 160. I do not and have never liked the little squeezy top, but it is what it is. You'll see this one also has kind of, again, that pink tone. Love this. I think I've gone through at least five or six of these in my lifetime minimum. A new find for me this year was the Essence High Beauty with Hemp Seed Oil Under Eye Corrector, and I got mine in the shade Peach Beige. So this is actually a doe foot. This one is definitely the most peachy one I have. So the other two were a little more pink toned. This one's definitely more peachy toned. I love them all equally. I definitely think they all do a very similar thing. I will grab for this one or this one when I'm trying to do something really quick and I just want to whoosh, whoosh, um, because I don't want to stick my finger in a, in a pot. So that's the only thing I will say about the Becca one is I wish it was in a different format, but I really enjoy this. A drugstore alternative to this is the Pixie Corrector, if you can find that in your Target or local drugstore. So those are correctors. I have three, four, four concealers I want to talk about. So the first one is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. I have the shade L12 Fair. This is what it looks like. Doe foot applicator really skinny doe, doe foot. I just kind of mark these off over here. This one definitely adds a little brightening like this specific tone for me. Love this, just it's really nicely under the under eyes. Doesn't add too much brightness, doesn't add any creasing. I think that's a great one from the drugstore. My alternative to that in the high-end category, and you'll actually see I've used I don't know if you can see that. I've used quite a bit of this. Is the Tarte of um, Tarte C Hydro Concealer. Really love this um, baby blue kind of packaging. It's like a Tiffany blue. Another doe foot. Also a really skinny one. This one's definitely more of a yellow based color for me. This is the shade, did I tell you, 14N Fair Light Neutral. Another one that just goes on the under eyes so, so smoothly, does not crease, doesn't cake up. Just a really beautiful, and I love that it's so thin and small and kind of like, it's very, very skinny, so it doesn't take a lot of room. The other two that are my favorites, I have another drugstore favorite, and these two are kind of more in the full coverage concealer category. Um, so this is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. Looks like this. I have it in the shade Classic Ivory L400. This has a much bigger one than the first two that you saw. And this is definitely a higher coverage concealer. So there it is right there. For the most part, my concealer tones tend to be on par with each other. Love this if you're looking for a much heavier and by heavy, I don't mean cakey. I just mean a much fuller kind of coverage on your uh, on your concealer, especially for your under eyes. Now, my other favorite is a long-standing favorite, and it's a favorite of many, is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This one is huge in comparison to all of the others that I showed you. This actually has way more product. This has a half a fluid ounce where some of these, I think... You know, they're like a quarter of an ounce or somewhere. Not all of them have like 0.33 ounces and a half an ounce. And so you're almost getting double. So while, while it is more expensive per ounce, the cost on this one actually turns out to be pretty good. Another big doe foot applicator. I'll put that one right under the cover girl. So there it is, a little bit more yellow toned. I actually have two shades in this. I have almond and swan, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Yes, almond and swan. I actually bought Swan because I wanted something that was just a little bit lighter for when I'm looking for more brightening. And so what, I, what I've what i actually been doing is I'll put a little bit of the darker one right up in that corner because it's more of a yellow orangey base. And then I'll put a little bit of the light one and bring it down so that I get coverage and highlighting all at the same time. So these two definitely enjoy those. So those are my liquid base foundation 
type products. Now I also did want to throw in face powders in this specific video just because I don't have a lot that I want to show. So I thought this would be a great place to do it. So my first one is going to be the number seven lift and illuminate triple action translucent finishing powder. Looks like this. Let's see if I can't blind you. I got mine in the shade light. This powder is just really soft and really smooth. This was a Jessica Braun. You're not going to be able to see that. <laughs> a Jessica Braun found um, powder recommendation for the under eyes. And so this sets your under eyes beautifully. And if you use a microfiber sponge specifically, it sets your under eyes like heaven. The next one that I want to show you that is a powder foundation is my Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brighten Color Correcting Foundation in Fair. I have loved this foundation for years and years and years. It looks super cool. It's marbled. It's called color correcting because it's got like a little bit of yellow and pink and different colors in there. You kind of just swirl it around. I use fair because light is too dark for me. So if that tells you anything kind of about their shade range. I use this powder foundation to set my face whenever I have a foundation that I like a liquid foundation that I am not happy with. This fixes almost 90% of my foundation problems. So if I put on a foundation that's new or it's not playing well with my primer for today for whatever reason, I will put this on and it kind of just helps to blur everything out, to fix everything. And so I have repurchased this numerous, numerous times. This is a backup. I actually have a giant one from QVC um, that I'm currently going through right now. I did break the lid on this one, so, but that's how much of that I have used. This used to be a domed baked product, so you can see that level of use. Um, absolutely adore this foundation. I have been using this for years. So those are two foundations. And then I have one more, and this is a Flower Beauty Light Illusion Perfecting Powder. It looks like this. I think Flower Beauty is now sold at um, CVS, if I'm not mistaken. I have mine in the shade Porcelain L1. This is a dupe, you guys. I used to have the Charlotte Tilbury powder. This is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Do not spend your money on the Charlotte Tilbury powder unless you don't believe me and then buy them both and you'll see for yourself. This is just so smooth and so buttery and just so finely milled. It's gorgeous. And this cost $10. And if I'm not mistaken, you get more product than you do in the Charlotte Tilbury one. I flew through that Charlotte Tilbury one because I didn't realize how little product there was in it. So highly recommend if you have been wanting that one, buy this instead. Okay. Last one. And it's my only loose powder that I have. And I actually have kind of a midi size of it. Um, so not like the tiny, tiny one that comes in like samples, but an actual mini. This is the Hourglass, do I have that upside down? Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder. This one is, again, the mini. The, the full size one is beautiful. Like the lid to it is like gold and it kind of has a little divot in there, like a little well where the powder goes. Um, again, mine is just the sample. The little holes are cut out in an H, which is also cute. But this powder is just so, so finely milled and it's just so soft on the skin, you guys, like it blends in. I like to use this for my under eyes as well when I'm feeling like using a loose powder for that purpose. Absolutely gorgeous. Highly recommend. Again, they do sell this in this size specifically and then they sell it in the big one. I have been using this on and off for a while. And I don't know if you can see, I am still, I mean, I've, I've used a little bit, but there is a lot in here, you guys, because I do not use a lot of that. So anyway, those are my base products, my base products for 2020, my favorite beauty products of the year so far. Um, please share down below if you have any foundation, primer, concealer finds that you have loved this year in 2020. Um, I, again, I know because of the pandemic, many of us have switched kind of our foundation preferences. I will say I have loved for mask wearing specifically, this is not a favorite of the year, but I did just want to throw it out there. 
the NARS foundation, the soft matte complete foundation. I have mine in the shade Salzburg light 3, 3.5. This has been what I wear anytime that I'm going to leave the house to physically go into the office, to go to the grocery store, to do anything because it's a matte foundation and it doesn't mess up when I wear my mask. So if I'm wearing my mask and I'm taking it on and off, on and off, on and off, this holds up beautifully. So while not a favorite of mine, because again, I don't like mattifying foundations for my face necessarily, I will say for Beauty 2020, this has been a winner for me. So anyway, with that said, again, please don't forget to subscribe down below if you would like to be part of the Cam Fam, and I look forward to seeing you for the rest of the series. Bye.